Java GUIs are one of the most requested comments on my videos, so I'm gonna do another one for you. If you wanna see the first one, we make a button, and that button increments a counter. That's up on the screen now if you wanna check that out. But first, my name is Alex Lee. On this channel, I post a Java tutorial every single week for you, so if you might be interested in seeing that, then please consider subscribing. I also have awesome t-shirts. Most of us in college don't know what we're doing, so it's literally just a shirt that says, I have no idea what I'm doing. Sometimes it's just best to embrace it and not pretend like you have to know everything all the time. You can use coupon code SISOUT10 to get 10% off your order. So first, let's start our GUI by going to File New Java Project. We'll call it GUI Coolness. We're finished. And then inside of that, we'll go to New Class on the Source folder. And we'll call it just GUI. Boom, main method, cool. We've got a lot to do. Let's first start by making the frame and the panel. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. So we're gonna be making a little window. It's gonna have some labels, some text fields to enter text, and a button. But that's gotta be on something. And we call that a frame. There are a million ways to make GUIs, but we're gonna use one called Swing, which is a really outdated <laughs> one for Java, but teaches you the basics. So we'll start off using swing to make a GUI by making a frame. And it's called a JFrame. Call it frame, just like any other object has this format. We're gonna hover over it, click import so we can use it. We're also going to want to make a panel, which is JPanel. Import that. And now we have the two fundamental ones we need to start making a GUI. Next, we're gonna configure it, the little window that we're gonna have pop up. So we're just gonna use this frame object and use methods that it has to just set it up how we want. We're gonna do one called set size with a width and a height. We'll have it be 100 by 100. And to make it close properly, we'll do frame dot set default close operation. This is just an integer, but we can also call a variable called exit on close from the JFrame library. Lastly, we'll do frame.set visible to true. Save and run this. And now we see a 100 by 100, I believe these are pixels, 100 by 100 window, which is our frame. And this is what we're gonna work with. Now this panel is sort of like the little invisible border guidelines for the elements that we're gonna put on it. The frame is the window, the panel is the layout. But first we gotta put the panel on the frame. So we have to do actually frame.add panel. Put the panel up here so it sees it. Now I've got the panel on the frame. So if we save and run this, then we get a nice little window and this little invisible panel that we're going to use. So we configured the frame and that's great and everything, but now let's start configuring the panel. We can do panel.setLayout. Um, we'll just set this to null right now. You can learn more about layouts and like rows and columns and ordering things um, later, but Right now, I just wanna give you the basic idea of like the application we're gonna do. Not really dive into the specifics of layouts right now. We'll start off by making a label, jlabel, label equals new jlabel. Looks familiar, huh? It looks just like how we're making all the other objects. Boom, import it. You'll see javax.swing, that's the library, swing. So we know we're using the right import statement. Now, let's kind of set the text to the label. We can do that in here. We're gonna have a user label with the username text box. Then we're going to have the password label, a password text box, and then a login button. When we click the button, we'll have a little message that says, you have been entered successfully, login successfully. So let's start with that user label. We'll just call it user. Next, for that label, we can set some bounds in padding to make it look nice. So we can do set bounds, put a x, y, width, and height. 
I'm getting this from this great website called Beginner's Books here. So they actually have this example. I'm just changing it a little and explaining it for you. So if you wanna see the full code, you can get it here. And the padding that they thought would look nice is 10, 20, 80, 25. Lastly, we'll just add that label to the panel. Save, run. We don't see anything yet. Oh, we do but we have to like kind of change it. So I believe this set of visible true has to come at the very end. Save and run that. We have to click it for some reason, but we'll worry about that in a little bit. Let's just get the elements on here. Now let's make that text field called J text field, user text, J text field, import that user text dot set bounds to 120, 165, 25. Again, these are what the website said and looked nice. And then inside the constructor of the text field, we can say the length of that text field. Save it and run. Now we get, well, it just took some time to load, I guess. Oh, we haven't added it. So we gotta do panel.add user text. Boom. Beautiful. There's just some little formatting issues. So maybe let's just make this a little bigger, say 350 and 200, so that it's shown in all of its glory. Beautiful. And we can type in here, and it's beautiful. And the reason this works is because Swing is a library that deals with all this to begin with, so we don't have to code it all from scratch. We can just use this Swing library with objects and methods. That's why Java is so great. Now let's add the password label and the password text box. So I'll just name this user label. Replace that. We'll do password label. J label, call it password. On the password label, we'll set the bounds to 10, 50, 80, 25. So if you notice here, it's X, Y width height, X, Y width height. If we run this, X, Y starts at the top here. So we go 10 to the right and 20 down, X, Y. And then this is the width 80 and the height of the label here. So when we do the password now, we see 10 to the right, 50 down. So it'll be here and the same width and height as this one. So when we add it, And you'll see it's right where we set. Let's add that last text field, except this one is a password field now. So um, when you type your password, you don't want everyone to see it, like if someone's on your screen. So you do the little circles, right? That one's called a password field. So we do J password field, password text, Boom, import that, password text, set bounds to 100, the same X as the user text, so it lines up nicely, 50, so it matches the Y, 165, 25, so it's the same width and height of the user text box. Add that to the panel. Password text. Save, run. And we got this beautiful username and password. And it's awesome. We can type stuff. And this is different than this one because it's a password.
super cool stuff. I love GUIs. I wanted to be a like a front end web developer guy because I love GUI so much. Now let's add a button. This is called J button. Same deal as before. Just with a button now. Import that. And you'll notice we're racking up the imports up here. We're using all these. Button, we'll set the bounds. This will be 10, so it matches up. 80 down, 80 width, and 25 height. Oh, that should be button. Add it to the panel. So you should notice a pattern here. We're just doing the same thing for everything. Now the button's blank and doesn't do anything, <laughs> which isn't very awesome. So we can name it. We'll say like login here. And now it'll say login. Cool. But now we want to check the text of the user and password, see if it matches something, and then if it matches, show the successful login message. So let's make the login message first and then tie an action to the login and get the text. So let's add that success label. This will be a J label. The capital L. Um, success equals new J label. And here's where we set the text of the label. We'll set it to nothing for now so it doesn't show up. And this has to be, this is tricky. Capital L there. It'll screw up if you don't have that capital L. We'll set the bounds. Success, just like before. 10, 110, some long amount because it's going to be a pretty long message. And regular height. Panel.add success because we're successful. Save run. Now, theoretically, the label is right here. But we only want it to show if the user enters a correct username and a correct password hits login, boom, and then we want the message to show. So all we're gonna do is do success, the label, success.setText, that's what we're gonna do, like this, success.setText, and we can set the text, simple as that. But let's first get the action on the button and get the text. To add an action to a button in Swing, you just type the name of the button, dot add action, listener. It's going to be inside of here, which is this GUI class. So we can just pass in like a new GUI object, new GUI, and we'll set it up accordingly. This has to take in a parameter of action listener. Action listener is an object just like any other object. But our GUI class is not an action listener object. It has no relation to it. So what we have to do is type implements action listener. Now our GUI, I misspelled it. Yes. <laughs> now our GUI implements the action listener. We'll just import that. We get a red underline because we need to add that action listener method. Now we have the action performed method. This code gets run whenever you click that button. Since we did button.add action listener, and the action listener is this class. We did implements, which means we add our own code to the action listener method right here. Since the button's tied to this method, we can now do stuff. And what we want to do is get the text of the user and the um, password. But first, we can just test that the button is working by printing out something like hi, or um, we'll do button clicked. Save run. Now, if we click it here, in the console, it'll say button clicked. And this, that was one of the coolest moments for me. Like I did some Android stuff and like being able to click a button on my phone and then have it show up in the console here was just like a super awesome moment for me. I hope you have this moment too. That's why I love programming. But let's see if text matches up. Let's say there's a set username and password and we wanna check. We'll say that the string user 
is equal to the user text dot get text. That's how we get the text. But it doesn't have access to it since it's in the scope of the main method. And this is in a different method. We can't do user text dot get text. So before we do this, we should actually take out all of these and put them up so that everything can see it. I would have done this from the beginning, but I just wanted to make it simple for you to understand by doing it all sequentially in the main method. So we're just gonna increase the scope by putting them up here. And we'll make them private as good practice. J label, user label. I'll skip through this. I added private for good practice and static so we can access it easier. And we don't need those in front of here now because the scope has increased. It already knows that this exists. Now we just gotta set it like normal. So now we can do the string user is going to be equal to the user text dot get text. And the password is going to be password text dot get text. Oops, get text. You'll see a little underline. This means that it's deprecated, which means not in production anymore. Like they don't support this method anymore, so it might not work. But it works for this example, and there are other ways to get around it. I'm just gonna keep it for simplicity. Now to illustrate this, we'll just print out user and password. Boom, run it. Now, we'll type a user, boom. Now when we click login, it's not gonna say button clicked because we changed it. It's gonna say user plus password, the things we got from the fields. Now all we have to do is say, if it matches certain ones, then we can do the login message. So we could say, if user equals, um, we'll just do Alex. If user equals Alex and password equals Fluffy Dinosaur123. Then we'll do the message. And the message is success. So we can just do success.setText2. Since it already is placed there, we just need to set the text to something. Login. Successful. Boom. Save it run it. We actually don't need to print this out anymore. Run it. We see this beautiful GUI, beautiful GUI that me and you have made together. It's been a lovely ride. It's been a great ride. But let's see if it works. Alex. Fluffy. Dinosaur. One, two, three. Log in. Login successful, beautiful. If this was something different, if we changed it, it would still have login successful because we're not changing it back afterwards. You could do that for yourself for extra credit. Just use uh, set text to empty if they try login again and it doesn't match. But as we can see, if this is something else, if it's not the username and password, no message. If it's message, you get the idea. I just like to do it again because it's so much fun. Yes. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed this video. I might do more stuff like this. GUIs, again, were a super requested topic. So I hope this helped you learn Java GUIs. I hope you had some fun with it. But I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Stay fly, homie.